Hi, I'm Tim Gideon for PC Mag, and today we take an in-depth look at the Apple iPad launching April 3rd. It doesn't come with much, just a sync cable and a power adapter. No earbuds, which is surprising given the minimum $500 price tag. On the top panel, we have an earphone jack and microphone. That's not a reset pin. And this is the power button. And on the right panel, this switch locks the accelerometer for when you don't want the screen to shift when you move the iPad. Below it, volume controls. The bottom panel speaker gets pretty loud, but don't expect serious bass. And in the center, the 30 pin connector for docking and computer sync. Browsing with Safari is fun and intuitive. You can zoom in and out just like on the iPhone. And a control on the toolbar allows you to open the most recent or popular sites you visited with one tap. For the most part, pages load quickly, although on my 802.11G router at home, it's not always lightning fast. My only real gripe is no flash support, still, which means no Hulu, and some sites with animation won't load. The mail app is easy to set up with support for Microsoft Exchange, Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, and MobileMe, but unlike the others, Gmail won't push your mail unless you set it up via Microsoft Exchange. Since Exchange can only run one account at a time, you wouldn't be able to access your corporate email if you did that. That's more of a knock on Gmail than the mail app, however. Saving attachments like photos is easy. They get filed away in the photo app. You can download Word documents sent via email and convert them to pages files too. Pages does a great job of making a near identical file. You do your work, save, and send it out again if you want as a Word doc via the mail app. I typed my entire review this way. Speaking of the photo app, it looks amazing. Photos are organized individually or by album and you browse quickly using this scroll bar. You can also organize by events or places which drops pens wherever your photos were taken. A great feature for travelers and maybe private detectives. You can also browse by events or faces. Look, this is our friend Liz. Hey Liz. One stealth use for the iPad might be as a digital frame when you aren't using it for anything else. The 9.7 inch screen's 1024 by 768 resolution does wonders for high res images. The screen size allows for more information to be displayed at once, hence the iPod app looks similar to iTunes on your computer. Clicking on an album will display full size artwork. Tapping on it again gives you track lists which you can then tap on to play. For some reason, Apple opted not to use CoverFlow, the horizontal browse by cover option that looks so cool on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Seems like it'd be a perfect fit here, but oh well. Of course, the iPad has iBooks, and they look great. It'll be interesting to see if the Kindle and other ebook readers stay in the game, or if Apple will dominate the market like they do the MP3 player market. You can search an iBook for anything, and if it finds what you're looking for, tapping the search result takes you to the page it's on. You can use the search tool for Google and Wikipedia results, too. You can also copy images, create bookmarks by tapping and holding on a word, and later you can navigate by the table of contents or your bookmark list. You saw me make that one. The store is hidden behind the virtual bookshelf, and there will be around 60,000 titles available at launch. You can even download a book sample for free, just like I just did, and peruse a couple chapters to see if you like it. By the way, you have to download the iBook app. It's not preloaded on the iPad, but it is free. The Maps app is one of my favorites. Search a location and search for what you want to find there, and this case, bars near Yankee Stadium. Pins drop, you select one, and you get more info. You can even monitor traffic conditions on this app. Not bad. Keynote is one of three iWork apps. I'm not an expert with PowerPoint, but I made a presentation, granted a pretty weak one here, uh, within a few minutes. Numbers is for creating good-looking spreadsheets. I found it a bit less intuitive than Keynote. And Pages, which we checked out earlier, was mindlessly easy. All three iWork apps are $9.99. We checked some beta versions of third-party iPad apps, and they're pretty impressive. The Marvel app will guide you bubble by dialogue bubble through a comic book, if you wish, or you can just zoom in on images. This periodic table app blew my mind. If I had this when I was a kid, maybe I would have been a better student. Maybe not, though, because I'd also have games like Real Racing HD to distract me all the time. This 3D driving game lets you put a custom skin on your car, and then you can use the entire iPad like a steering wheel. The sound through the speaker vibrates the iPad a bit when you're vrooming, and although I'm a terrible driver, I had fun with this one. There will be over 1,000 iPad apps at launch, and there are already 150,000 apps for iPhone and iPod Touch that will play on the iPad, they just won't look quite the same. Madden 10's iPhone app magically looked better to me once I selected the world's favorite team, the Washington Redskins. Watching movies and TV shows on the iPad is predictably enjoyable. Tapping once on the screen exits the 720p HD mode, eliminating the bars and filling the screen. Scrub quickly like this to access a different scene, and you can access subtitles or different languages by tapping on the control panel. The YouTube app comes preloaded, and its content generally is low res, but still fun to have at your fingertips. If you have the iMac wireless Bluetooth keyboard, you can pair that with the iPad, which is a simple process, and you'll be typing immediately but you cannot pair the magic mouse or any other mouse for that matter.
There are plenty of accessories, however, specifically for the iPad. Perhaps the coolest is the keyboard dock, which charges your iPad while you type on a real surface. The Wi-Fi only iPad comes in 16 gigs for $499, 32 gigs for $599, and 64 gigs for $699. Bucks. We've yet to test the Wi-Fi Plus 3G model, which is $629, $729, or $829 for the same capacities. And keep in mind, you'll have to pay more for 3G coverage as well. There's more to know. Check out our written review at PCMag.com, and thank you for watching.